Thank you. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot about what this is, except to say it's a way that you can write web front ends in Haskell. And how awesome is that? <laughs> um, it, it uses a library called Reflex, which is an FRP, or Functional Reactive Programming Library. And I'll just leave it at that. Hopefully you'll, I'm going to pretty much just live code something here so we can inject um, as much as much requests as you want, and we can go as long or as little as you want. <laughs> um, so the, the interesting thing about this is it is using a, a little web app that I wrote called HSnippet, and is currently being hosted by Obsidian Systems. I should give them a shout out, a shout out because the guys who founded Obsidian Systems are the guys who wrote Reflex. And uh, so they're, they're a, big, a big contributor to the Reflex ecosystem. And they, they are paying for the hosting for HSnipper right now. Anyone can create an account. Um, so it's very low, low friction. I also sort of intended HSnipper to be like a, a nice web app template that uses Snap and Reflex and WebSockets and Servant, but I haven't gotten it to that point yet. <laughs> it's on the way. So if you are interested in looking at the code to a snippet, you can find it on GitHub <coughs> at my GitHub page and uh, see, how, see some of the code there. But so, let's... Can you create the font size? Yes, I can. That good enough? Yeah. We're, we're, gonna, we're trying to build a web page. So what's the simplest possible thing we could build? What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> we a snippet took this. It concatenated it in with like some import statements and a main into a Haskell file. It compiled that Haskell file with GHCJS. GHCJS resulted in a JavaScript file as output. It sent the JS file back and injected it right here in, in the browser. And if we want to look at the build messages, we can see them here. If we want to have like a a little, a little error, we can see an error, not in scope, TXET. Um, so the documentation, so Reflex is an FRP library. I'm look, this is Reflex documentation right here. And then a Reflex-DOM is the name of the library that um, is the like web interface that's based on Reflex. So most of the stuff that I'm doing here in this presentation is going to be coming from the Reflex DOM library, and I'll try to actually make it seem like I don't know what functions to use, and we can look them up here for the fun of it in, in the API docs. So, okay, we have, we have a simple text, hello world, we run that again, we can see it. What's the next thing we want to do? Well, let's just add like an H1 around it and make it a title. How do we do that? Well, if we go back here to Reflex DOM's documentation, here's the Reflex DOM page. If we go to Reflex DOM widget basic, it's where most of these, ah, sorry, where most of these functions live. And if we just scroll through here, here we can see the text function we just used. It's basically a function string, whoops, I didn't mean to put down string, a string to, to a, an L. And if we keep on looking down here further, we'll pass some miscellaneous stuff. Aha, L for an element. This takes a string, and it takes another M thing. So what we can do is we can say L H1 dollar sign. Does that make sense? 
Or instead of using the dollar sign, I could use parentheses. But I'm going to use the dollar sign for purposes that will become evident later. Voila. Hello world in an H1 tag. Okay, that's now we now we can see how to start building up a DOM. You can basically um, you can do do this. We could say L div text body. Let's say so GHCJS is is uh, a bit slow. But it, well, it more than makes up for its slowness with things you can do with it. <laughs> okay, so, so now we can see here that this monad that we're in, the do notation is basically equivalent to ordering stuff in your DOM. Um, this is like, like you're writing HTML. Um, let's see, now let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's create but, okay, this is a button, we have to give it a string, and it gives us back an M event. Let's just try this. Let's say button, click, and actually we can even get rid of this too. but it doesn't do anything. The reason it doesn't do anything is because we're not doing anything with the event that came back from the button. So let's capture this event. And then let's go to over here to reflex. There's a nice little function called takes an event of anything and returns us a dynamic B where B is a num. So now let's say count E. What does this do? We gave it an event and it gives us a dynamic. Now we need to display, we need to say, we need to look for something that takes a dynamic. text. It takes a dynamic and it doesn't do anything, which kind of means it probably displays it in the DOM. But it takes a dynamic string. So we're going to have to do um, dyn text. This isn't quite right because it needs a dynamic string and count gives us a dynamic num. So we have to call a function actually the count function is also monadic. So we need to bind this to map dine show. Let's see if that works. Ooh, so everything is not like it's not even a combinator, it's not even an applicative counter. Very good question. That is a super frequently asked question. Dynamic is not an applicative functor right now for performance reasons because it does some sharing of, of results going on and, and Ryan is very, very concerned about making sure that everything is, is performant enough to be usable in production applications. So he knows that it should be, it should be feasible to make it an applicative functor, but he just hasn't had the time to actually do it yet. So Could at some point- use something like the graph five library I don't know. The, the, the underlying implementation for Reflex is really hairy. So I would guess maybe no, but I'm not sure. Um, 
okay, our error here, we couldn't deduce show. Oh, right, because it was a, a type of num. So if we add show int, just for a really simple way of getting, getting ourselves a type, a type annotation. I believe this should, yes. And now it counts our clicks. Does this make sense to everybody? So mapdyne is kind of the key thing here. There are events are functors, and there's another thing called behaviors, which are also functors. A dynamic is really basically a combination of an event and a behavior. A behavior is something that you can look at at any point in time, and you can say, what is this thing? And it will, it will tell you what, what its current value is. An event is something that happens at a current at some like discrete point in time, or a stream of things that happen at discrete points in time. So events kind of are push driven, and behaviors are kind of pull driven. A dynamic is you can think of it as kind of a combination of an event and a behavior. It is pull driven because it has that behavior in there, so you can look at its value anytime you want, but it also contains um, an event which tells you whenever the dynamic gets updated. So it's like a sample behavior? Like you sample a behavior by an event, is that basically it? Right, it, 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 you, you are provided with the ability to get an event of all its updates, and you are provided with the ability to get um, its current value at, at any time. Uh, like if you wanted to write count yourself, you would take the integral of the fold which increases by one and then you would sample it by the underlying event. Let's let's write it. Let's do that right now. Instead of count, let's say um, count die. Let's see, we're gonna do a full dine. So let's go look here. Full dine has this type signature. It takes an accumulator function, an initial value, and an event of A's, which are the updates. So we'll say full dine plus one, zero, E. And here, count that. Is it the const plus one? Mm -hmm. Yes, you probably are right. B to B. Plus one is a function b to b const. And one of the left binds probably should go, I guess. Oh, um, oh right. Yes, you could yeah. Because count dine is, is now not the Yeah, you, you don't need to let bind count dine. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. So this is probably exactly what that is under the hood. Um, if we look up count, ah, interesting. That's what I meant. Like you integrate the, the sum and the sum to it. Yeah, he has. A, I, I wonder if there's a reason that he's using this particular implementation instead of the one we just did. I don't know. Um, but we can we can see how this thing is implemented. Um, here he's so hold dine. There's kind of two combinators that let you construct dynamics: hold dine and fold dine. Hold dine takes an initial value, 
and then a stream of events of new values. Fold dime is what we just looked at. It, well, it, it's implemented with these lower level terms. Um, but let's just get back to something a little bit more, more interesting here. Um, let's see. Let's do an, a text input. So over here, there's another module, Reflex DOM Widget Input, which contains most of the input uh, elements. And here we have text input, and it takes a config and it gives us back a text input. So, ti text. Now let's go back to this text input. It has something called text input value, which is of type dynamic string. So this is kind of the definitive value of whatever is in the text input. And I also happen to know that we can um, use just a simple alias value to get at it. So every time we update anything in the text area, it's immediately reflected in that text. But now, so my, my rough outline for this talk is to create a, a little Twitter club, right? So we can, we can change this to be tweet, and we can call this H Twitter. <laughs> now, we want, Whenever the button is, we don't, we don't want this dynamic text to be updated all the time. We want it to be updated only when the button is clicked. Now, if we go back and look in this file, there's a function that does exactly that, and it's called tag dime. It takes a dynamic and an event of, of B, and it gives you back an event A, which is whatever the dynamic was at the time that this B event fired. So the B is just completely discarded. So we can say, instead of value, this is a dynamic. Value TI is a dynamic. We can say tag dime E. It's not a monadic function, it's pure. No, 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 it returns an event. Oh, right. Ah. tweet yet. That's our initial value. There we go. Well, what happens if we want to not just, oh, let's, let's do something again. So now we're always getting the last 
the last thing in there. What happens if we want to have a whole list of all of our past tweets? Okay. <laughs> um, let me think. Can we just fold plus plus? Empty list. Is this colon work? Do we need flip mm -hmm. colon? Might be might be flip colon. the problem down where we use it. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to probably iterate over oh. the list of tweets now. Thank you. I guess maybe that's not there. Yeah, so you want to unline the tweet for example? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take the cheesy way out. <laughs> yeah, and now we don't use the flip. Everyone with me there? We're, we're simply wrapping it. Now we have to text because we're calling mapdyne and so the the argument to mapdyne let's go look at it it's like an fmap right so it's a to b so th this thing is a dynamic list let's let's put a type signature on it just so it's clear We may have to take that off. I don't know if scope type variables is enabled. But we'll just leave it there for now. So when we're map dining over tweet, it's going to take a function. Let's, let's do um, I <laughs> list of string to question mark, right? You have type post there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you need a you want a proper map in there, right? That I know. Yes. So he's he's thoughtfully picked a trickier thing to do, and and it's tricky because this thing needs at least the way that the way that I am familiar with solving it in Reflex, you're going to use higher order FRP which is uh, something that not all FRP systems have. L, I believe, is, is a particularly um, like popular today FRP system that does not have higher order FRP. So Mapdyne expect, expects a pure value, but we're going to give it a dynamic, right? Or we're going to give it a monadic value because we're going to take Text is an M unit. 
and L also is an M unit. So we're, we're, we're map dining and we're going to get back an M unit. The way to handle this is with a function called... Well, actually there's two. There's, there's this function called dine and this function called widget hold. Dine is more like the type signature we need. It, it takes a dynamic MA and just gives us back an M with the event. Let's try using, let's try using dine because it's a little bit more straightforward. Let's get rid of these things. Yeah, because you, you, you should be map dining right. and map, right? So this is a list of a list of strings. So for every string in here, we want to map this function over it. This will give us a list, and then we, we're going to need to concat the list. So let's go here to dynamic and search for. Ooh, what do you know? Mconcat dyne. Let's see if this does what we want. We have a list of dynamics, and it gives us just a dynamic back, assuming that they form a monoid. We, we do have a list of monadic actions, don't we? Yes. So we, I think we can use sequence. Well, at that point, we can just use map um, inside. Oh, right. Thank you. Is that what we want? Aha! So there's our little Twitter clone. Um, I'm going to stop here. If people are interested, um, we can explore a little bit more. Um, this dine operator is actually not the one that I usually use. I usually use widget hold. And the reason widget hold is kind of nice is because it's structured very similarly to hold dine. Hold dine takes an initial value and an event and gives you back a dynamic. And this thing takes an initial widget and an event of new widgets and gives you back a dynamic of, of the value that the widget returns. Um, so this is, is the, the pattern that I usually find myself using in applications. Um, but they're both here and they're both usable. Um, any questions? Uh, is Canvas and stuff like that supported? I don't know about Canvas. SVG, I know is. I believe there is, there may even be SVG support. Okay, it's not a separate, whoops. For SVG support, you need namespaces. So, so there is namespace support. I, I know that we, we recently got the ability to do SVG. Oh, I'll show you just a little eye candy um, example. Anyone familiar with the Haskell diagrams package? We can build diagrams, all of diagrams. Diagrams, if you don't know, is a, is a pretty substantial package for doing, doing uh, diagrams and, and kind of graphics. And it lets you do some really cool things with a really small amount of code. And it's got a whole bunch of higher level math going on under the hood. And we're compiling all of that into JavaScript. 
in order to render this picture right here. And then we've made it dynamic and attached a little slider that can change the order of the Hilbert diagram. So the reason this is slow is because it's JavaScript code redrawing this whole entire Hilbert curve. And it's, it's okay when it's fat or when it's a small order, but when you get up here to the end, it, it takes a little bit, little bit longer. Um, but this is just, I think, a really, a really nice, cool example of some, some ways you can pull together different pieces and create, create some really cool things. Um, so H snippet is pretty much the fastest way that you can start playing with Reflex today. Actually building your own Reflex applications, it's a little bit, a little bit more work. Ryan has a um, a repository called Reflex Platform that has a really nice getting started um, thing. And the README here goes through a lot of things. Basically, you clone it, you CD, and you run this try Reflex script, and it will install everything that needs to be installed. It may take a little while because it, it it uses the Jix package manager to get all the dependencies, and um, most of the time they're cached, so it, it's just a download that it ha typically. Um, and this this is a, a nice little on ramp to getting started with your own project, but that takes more more than just five minutes. H snippet, you can play around with Re Reflex right now. Any other questions?